Richard Colvin Cox born July 25, 1928, last seen January 14, 1950, was a second-year cadet who disappeared from the United States Military Academy, at West Point, New York. In January 1950, he was visited by a young man whose first name may have been George three times over the course of a week. On the third occasion, Cox and George left the grounds of the academy and were never seen again. According to an eyewitness account from another cadet the two men seemed to have known each other, somewhere other than West Point. Cox is the only West Point cadet to have disappeared, without a trace. Richard Colvin Cox, son of Rupert F. and Minnie Colvin Cox, was the youngest of six children. His father died when Richard was 10. There had been rumors of suicide, but actually his death resulted from an aggravated diabetic condition. He had been a practicing Christian scientist, some said he would have lived much longer had he received proper medical attention. Richard's mother, Mrs. Minnie Cox, was currently owner and operator of the family business, the Rupert F. Cox Insurance Agency. During his high school years, Cox told a friend, he did not have time to participate in athletic teams because he always had an after-school job. During summer vacations in his teen years, he worked full-time. While working on a road crew in Mansfield, he fell and cut his arm badly on a Sith, wrote Mayhuffer citing a witness who was interviewed by researcher Marshall Jacobs more than 30 years later. Cox immediately went home for help from his mother, who was a Christian science lay reader. She refused to call a doctor. The cut became infected, wrote Mayhuffer, and later a woman who lived next door brought him to a doctor. As a result of the accident, ended up with a prominent scar. After graduating from a public high school in Mansfield in 1946, Cox volunteered for service in the United States Army. He joined the United States Constabulary, a United States Army Gendarmerie force, raised to be a police-type occupation and security force in Allied-occupied Germany. In May 1947, he began his assignment to the 6th Constabulary Regiment, based at Coburg in the American Occupation Zone in Germany, and was in the S-2 Intelligence Section of Headquarters Company. Later in 1947, Cox applied for and received his appointment to West Point, arriving at the United States Military Academy, preparatory school then located at Stewart Field near the Academy proper, in January 1948. Cox entered West Point in May 1948 and did well there. Academically, he was ranked at about 100 out of a class of 550. He joined West Point's athletic team and competed in a national NCAA competition only a month before his disappearance. Cox was engaged to be married, he and his fiancée, Betty Timmons, planned to marry after his graduation from West Point at 4.45 p.m. on Saturday, January 7, 1950, a man telephoned Cox's West Point classmate, Peter Haynes. Haynes was acting as charge of quarters in Cadet Company B2 part of the North Barracks, and answered incoming calls for company members. He later said the caller's tone was rough and patronizing, almost insulting. After Haynes told the man that Cox was not in his room, the man replied, Well, look, when he comes in, tell him to come on down here to the hotel. Just tell him George called he'll know who I am. We knew each other in Germany. I'm just up here for a little while, and tell him I'd like to get him a bite to eat. Haynes later stated he could not be completely certain the name given was George, as he had answered many phone calls, while on duty and that one had not seemed, noteworthy at the time, Cox never referred to the man by name. At 5.30 p.m., a man entered Grand Hall an area where cadets could meet guests and ask to see Cox. The cadet on duty telephoned Cox to tell him he had a visitor. The cadet later described the visitor, as slightly under 6 feet, 1.83 meters m, tall and weighing around 185 pounds 84 kilogram. He was fair-haired, had a fair complexion and wore a belted trench coat, but no hat. When Cox entered the hall, he shook hands with the man, the cadet on duty, later recalled he seemed glad to see him. Cox signed out in the company B2 departure book, indicating he would have dinner off campus. Cox later admitted to his roommates, however, they did not dine, but drank from a bottle of whiskey, while sitting inside the man's parked car. Cox returned to Cadet Company B2, signed the departure book, took a shower, and slept off the effects of the alcohol his two roommates later revealed this. As a prank, his roommates photographed him, slumped over his desk, asleep.
At an indeterminate time that evening, Cox altered the military time he had written in the departure book, changing 19.23 p.m. to 18.23 p.m. to make it look as if he had attended the 6.30 p.m. cadet supper formation. In fact, he had skipped the formation. This detail was not discovered until two years later, when an agent of the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command had the departure book examined in a laboratory. If the alteration had been discovered when it was fresh in January 1950, Cox could have been charged with violating the Cadet Honor Code and likely expelled. The next morning, before attending the Sunday chapel service, Cox mentioned his visitor to his roommates. The man, Cox said, was a former U.S. Army Ranger who had served in the same unit as he had in Germany. Cox said the man liked to brag about killing Germans during the war and had boasted about cutting off their private parts afterward. Another story he told Cox was about having gotten a German girl pregnant and then murdering her to prevent her from having the baby. That afternoon, Cox signed out a second time to meet the man, returning at about 4.30 p.m. The following six days were without incident. Cox mentioned his visitor once to his roommates. He remarked that he hoped he wouldn't have to see the fellow again, giving them the impression he viewed the man with distaste. On Saturday, January 14, Cox watched a basketball game between the Army and Rutgers University. Afterwards, he was seen talking to a man thought to be George, although the cadet who saw the two talking gave a description that differed greatly from the description given by the cadet who had seen the stranger in Grant Hall on January 7. According to the eyewitness description from January 14, George was dark-haired and rough-looking. Cox returned to his room, and mentioned to a roommate, he was signing out to dine with his visitor again, although he appeared not apprehensive, just sort of disgusted. The two men left the grounds of the academy and vanished without a trace. Cox was supposed to return by 11 p.m. When he did not return, no alarm was raised because cadets occasionally returned late. His continued absence was reported to a superior officer at 2.30 a.m., but again no action was taken as cadets had been known to stay out all night despite the punishment this would incur. On Sunday morning, his roommates reported all they knew of the matter to their superior, the New York State, police and the CID were informed. The FBI also became involved in the investigation. Three days after Cox's disappearance, a public appeal for information was broadcast on nearby radio stations. The grounds of West Point were intensively searched by helicopter and by troops on the ground. The Lusk Reservoir was dragged, the banks of the Hudson River were searched, and a nearby pond was drained. The manhunt lasted two months, but produced no significant leads. A search of army records for a soldier who had served with Cox and matched the description of George only led to individuals who could not have been at West Point at the time of the disappearance. Cox's service in Germany was investigated and revealed nothing out of the ordinary. The theory that he had deliberately deserted from West Point was discounted, as he had left behind in his room $87 equivalent to $925 when adjusted for inflation, and two suits of civilian clothes. On March 15, 1950, Cox was listed as absent without leave. He was declared legally dead in 1957.